again. Welcome to a brand new week of introduction to textile studies. This week, we will be attempting to create the North American lattice smocking. So let's jump straight into the materials and tools you will need for this week's activity. Okay, so here we are. Uh, let me introduce the materials that you need for today's activity. So I have here a piece of pre-cut A4 size fabric um, that I have cut on a straight grain. And that's very important to cut your fabrics on a straight grain. Okay. I have here also um, a pre drawn pattern, my lattice pattern that I've drawn roughly in the middle of an A4 paper. So I started off by measuring two inches away from a short edge and 1.5 inches away from the top long edge. My lattice pattern measures a total of 5 inches on the short edge and 5.5 inches on the long edge. Each one of the box that I've drawn here is a half inch square. So I used a clear ruler here to help guide me to draw this lattice pattern um, in a very neat and straight manner so this will really help you because you can see through the ruler here and it helps to guide you to draw uh, a very precise measurement and precise inch boxes okay so that is the measurements that you will require for your lattice exercise All right, so I also have here a tool that will help me transfer this pattern onto my fabric. Um, this is called a tracing wheel. It looks like the back of a cowboy boots or um, a pizza cutter, as some would call it as well. And to aid me in transferring my pattern to my fabric, I am using a one-sided tracing paper. Now you can get these from um, Bunga Ribbon or any sewing supply and haberdashery shop. They usually come in five different colors, blue, yellow, red, green and white. For today's uh, activity, because my fabric is a little darker, so I'm choosing to use either yellow or white. We are also going to be using hand stitching needles because the lattice pattern is done using hand stitches. So get ready a, um, a hand stitching needle and also select a thread that is the closest color to your fabric. Um, I tend to always go with uh, when I don't have the nearest color to my fabric, I always go with the darker tones or a darker color uh, as opposed to a brighter color to my fabric. So make your best selection because you want it to be less visible when the lattice pattern is being sewn on. So the next thing we're going to do now is we are going to transfer our pattern onto our fabric. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to align my pattern to my fabric. Okay, now this is where it's very important to actually draw your pattern um, uh, make sure that your pattern is drawn aligned to the edge of your A4 paper because your fabric is cut on a straight grain. So the edges are actually straight. So when you draw your pattern um, 
on a straight grain as well align it to the edge of your paper then you're making sure that when you transfer your pattern to your fabric and when you sew your patterns um, it is also on a straight grain otherwise if you do not sew your lattice pattern on a straight grain when the fabric is goes through a wash cycle the, the, the shape of the lattice might um, be altered or might be changed or stretched up okay so here we go I'm just gonna get my tracing paper okay so I'm gonna play um, when you touch your tracing paper if you can't see it on the white color you might see it on a different color there is one side that has color on it and the other side is pretty um, blonde all right now this is the side where um, it has been treated with a layer of chalk chalk like almost color okay and this is where you want it to face onto the fabric Okay, so also when you trace your pattern onto your fabric, uh, make sure that this side is the wrong side of the fabric and not the right side. Okay, alright, so the wrong side and the pattern and you're going to put, okay, your chalk paper, your tracing paper in between your fabric the good thing about this tracing paper is that it's also A4 okay and this one to go on top so make sure that they are all aligned now it would really help to get some pins and pin it down So make sure that they are all flat. You want to pin on the edges um, simply because you're going to be tracing the middle here. So you don't want your pins to disrupt um, your tracing wheel. Okay, and so we're going to start tracing and you simply have to go through the lines here with your tracing wheel so let me show you here okay so we're gonna go through each one of the lines and the pattern uh, will be traced onto your fabric when you lift it up later on okay so I have finished tracing and going through all of my lines here. So if you can see all these little dotted lines all across, I have gone through it with my tracing wheel. So we're going to go ahead and release the pins. And lift it up. So that's the tracing paper with the chalk side facing uh, to the wrong side of my fabric. Okay, so as you can see there, uh, please ignore this little print there. Um, but this is the wrong side of the fabric and as you can see, the pattern has been transferred onto the wrong side of the fabric. Um, now, some of you may be wondering why not use a tailoring pencil or a tailoring chalk and draw directly onto the fabric. It sounds much easier than having to first draw it on a paper and transfer it over to your fabric. Uh, now, there are a couple of reasons why. Uh, simply because number one, 
you may make mistakes while you are directly using a chalk and or tailoring pencil or even a disappearing ink pen uh, and when you draw onto your fabric directly you may make mistakes um, and that will be very hard to erase you can't erase it unless you wash it off um, also sometimes your tailoring chalk or your pencil they may be slightly thick thicker on the edge so you may um, end up with a pattern that is a little off from the measurement so to be really precise it really helps if you draw your your pattern on a piece of paper first and then transfer it over using the um, tailoring paper or the tracing paper all right so to go ahead here um, I have uh, threaded my needle for the sake of this video I'm actually not going to use the gray color because I think it'll be really hard to see okay uh, so I have threaded my needle here let me just focus on it okay um, and I'm not going to double it up I'm going to use one ply so uh, you don't want to double up your thread as well because the thicker it is um, the more likely that it will be visible on the right side later on so we're just going to use one ply so one of the um, tail end is shorter than the other okay and for this exercise we're basically gonna um, be doing very simple basic stitches but you're going to be applying what we call a back stitch um, to the, the areas where you see the lines so whenever you see a line on your box you are going to pull the fabric when you don't see a line on the box we're not gonna pull the fabric okay so we start from the very edge of um, your pattern here and we're gonna start first with a double back stitch so from this edge here I'm just gonna do a double back stitch I'm gonna go um, I'm gonna go down here okay down the first line of boxes here so I'm gonna start from here and just catch very little okay so I'm starting from here and I'm going down there so I'm just catching really little um, you want to catch as little as possible because you don't want your thread to be visible on the right side of the fabric. So we call this, when you catch uh, very little, we call this a prick stitch. Um, basically, you're catching one thread count of your fabric. So this is a double back stitch. Um, basically on the same spot you're just going in and um, out from the same spot double times in this case I'm doing three times just to make sure that it's secure okay so we're gonna go here okay now um, with smoking you want to make sure that the direction of your track is diagonal as well yeah um, don't try to attempt it on the other direction because it can be very difficult so you want to go here catch very little okay I'm catching a little too much here uh, that, this is the reason why you have been asked to use um, a thread color that is similar as well so that you uh, when you finish it you don't see uh, too much of it on the right side 
okay so the first box um, has no lines so we're not going to pull the fabric now we're going to change direction of our um, needle we're going to go this way now okay so i'm going to catch as little as possible and going to pull it okay now I'll go to the, to the other end of that box catch as little as possible and this time I'm going to pull the fabric together Okay. So when I pull it together, I want to secure it. I'm just going to hold them together and do a double back stitch on the top by catching the two folded bits together. Again, catch as little as possible. Okay, that's one on the same spot. You go another time. Okay, so that secures the stitch. All right, so we continue on to the next box. You want to stretch it out a bit and you can see that the next box has no line so this time we're gonna go this way okay and we're not gonna pull it all right change direction going this way now so we're gonna catch on this direction okay um, now this tend to happen a lot especially when you're doing hand stitches um, you know when you catch a little ball uh, like that it's important to not continue tugging on um, your needle but instead gently unwind it put your finger on it and slowly pull okay so this happens very often um, when your thread is starting to wind up like that you want to just gently put your needle there and unwind it okay It also helps if your thread is not too long. Um, keep it short so that it doesn't get winded up or gets broken along the way. Um, if your thread breaks, then you have to unpick it and start again. So just be really gentle with it. Um, it's always advisable to keep it short. Okay. So here we're going double back stitch to secure the pull. Okay, on to the next box which has no line and we're changing direction of our needle again. The next box has a line, so this is an indication that we're going to pull again. So 
so every time you pull your fabric you have to make sure that you do a double back stitch all right so when you go towards the end of the line you can continue if you need if your thread is long enough you can continue to jump on to the second line of boxes and you're going back upwards so we went downwards you go upwards okay and uh, sorry upwards downwards upwards and downwards all the way until you finish um, your boxes all right you do not want to skip your boxes or skip lines because then it will be very tough for you to get back into it and see uh, the pattern later on all right so remember to go upwards downwards upwards downwards um, if your thread is not long enough you, uh, let's say you end up halfway and it's not long enough um, whenever you're near the end you can do a double back stitch okay and a third one do a third one where you catch one of the threads or catch a little bit of the fabric okay and you just wind your your um, thread around the needle three times hold the thread and pull the needle up you're making a knot here okay and you can just snip it off Right, then you thread a new needle with a, a new thread and you can begin again from the very same spot you can continue on so say I've snipped it off now okay and I just want to continue on so to start off again on the very same spot I'm just gonna do a double back stitch again because without the double back stitch my thread is not going to stay So we continue on here. So I've reached the end of my line there. I'm just doing a double stitch again before I turn it upside down. Okay, and I will continue on to 
the second line of box here. Okay. So make sure that you follow the direction. Um, every time it skips to the next box, the diagonal line goes in a different direction. just gonna flip it around and show you okay that's how it looks like after you've sewn your first line and if you continue on uh, you're gonna get a lattice pattern so I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off and I will show you uh, the end result in a bit so I've completed my smocking here let's turn it around and see how it looks like There you go. That is a lattice smocking. What it does look like is um, the top of a apple pie <laughs> where you see um, a crisscross pattern go across it. Okay, so there you have it. This is the lattice smocking. Now, to finish off your exercise, please remember um, I forgot to mention earlier that you should do this probably before you start smocking. Um, if you have bought a pinking shears, uh, please cut the edges using your pinking shears all round. And if you have not, you can do the tape method. So you put the tape on all four edges here and cut across it uh, so that you don't get all these fraying bits here. So I'm going to do this um, after I finish smoking just because I forgot to mention it earlier. But it will be best if you uh, do it before you start smoking. So you don't have to struggle with um, opening up all these gathers here to um, cut your zigzag or to stick your cellophane tape on. So that's the end of our exercise here. Good luck to you. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.